This is the Artemis I mission leaving Earth and heading for the Moon. This spacecraft left Earth in the same way that all spacecraft leave. But watch what happens when it gets close to the Moon. The Orion capsule is sent on a crazy trajectory, leaping ahead of the Moon, falling behind, and then being thrown back to Earth. What's even crazier is that this journey took 26 days to complete. Compare this to the Apollo 8 journey, which only took 6 days to complete and followed a much simpler route. So why didn't Artemis just do this? Getting to the Moon is no easy task. It takes an enormous amount of energy to get there. In fact, it takes more energy to land on the Moon than it does to land on Mars, despite the Moon being 500 times closer. The goal with Artemis 1 was to send the Orion capsule around the Moon and test out all of its systems. The goal of the Apollo missions was to land humans on the Moon and return them to Earth. This requires a lot more energy, which makes the Saturn V rocket even more impressive. But the SLS is actually more powerful than the Saturn V. So why did Artemis 1 need to take such a weird route to the Moon? In this video, we're going to look at the incredible physics behind getting Artemis 1 to its unusual orbit around the Moon. We'll also be announcing the winner of the previous giveaway, so make sure you stick around to the end of the video. When planning your route to the Moon, it all comes down to delta V, which is basically how much the spacecraft has to change its velocity to complete its journey. The delta V required for a specific route is the same for every rocket. Two completely different rockets traveling on the same route will require the same amount of delta V, but it's how much energy you have to put in to get that delta V that really matters. This shows the delta V required for every stage of a typical Apollo mission to the Moon. The problem is, any change in velocity requires fuel to be burned. If your rocket is much heavier or its engines are less efficient, you will need to put in more energy to achieve the same delta V. Despite SLS being more powerful than the Saturn V, the delta V dramatically falls away when we compare the command modules. Although Orion is lighter than Apollo, it has less than half of the delta V. This is because Artemis 1 went with a much roomier command module at the expense of a smaller service module. Apollo did the opposite and used a smaller command module with a much more capable service module, with more thrust and propellant capacity. This had a massive effect on delta V, but having such a small and lightweight command module meant that the life support systems could only support the crew for a total of 14 days. Because of this, the Apollo missions had no choice but to take the quickest route to the Moon. This involved performing a long-duration burn as soon as it arrived at the Moon, to slow it down and place it into orbit. This took a lot of energy, but it meant that they could get into lunar orbit in just three days, compared to ten days for Artemis 1. Orion simply didn't have the Delta V to do this, and so NASA had to do an amazing bit of planning to get to the Moon. This brings me to the Omazing sponsor of today's video, Omaze. Omaze gives people the chance to dream big and win once-in-a-lifetime prizes, all while helping nonprofits to make our world a better place. Right now, Omaze is giving you the chance to win a custom Tesla Model S Apex. This Model S Plaid Edition is top of the line and loaded with cutting-edge technology from a 396-mile driving range to a 0 to 60 time in less than 2 seconds. Sure, it may not be able to get you to space, yet but it will certainly get you anywhere else you need to go, in style. Enter for your chance to win at omaze.com slash primalspace and support the Peterson Automotive Museum in developing new exhibits, events, and education programs. This experience closes on the 27th of January, so enter today and help Omaze reach their goal of raising more than $1 billion in a single year. In order for Orion to get to the moon and stay for long enough, NASA aimed for a distant retrograde orbit, which had never been done around the moon until this year. This involves orbiting the moon at a distance and moving in the opposite direction to the moon's orbit around Earth. In this orbit, the spacecraft spends an equal amount of time at Lagrange points 1 and 2, which helps to keep the orbit balanced. This means that the spacecraft doesn't need to waste fuel in order to maintain its orbit. In order to get to this orbit, a spacecraft could aim to meet the moon here and perform a burn to slow itself down and complete the orbit. This is called a direct insertion. That's what she said! <laughs> and is essentially what the Apollo missions did. However, to save as much fuel as possible, Orion went a different way. Instead of aiming at a point 70,000 kilometers from the Moon, Orion aimed for this point, just 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. From here, Orion made use of a gravity assist to slow it down. Although most people think of gravity assists being used to accelerate an object, the exact opposite can be done by approaching the Moon from a different side. 
The moon orbits the Earth counterclockwise. If Orion approached the moon from this side, not only would the moon's gravity pull it in, but since the moon is also moving away incredibly fast, it would pull the spacecraft along and slingshot it at an even greater velocity. If you approach the moon from the other side, you end up traveling in the opposite direction to the moon, and so instead of increasing your speed, it pulls against you and slows you down. This is exactly what Orion did. But this alone isn't enough to get into lunar orbit. When Orion reached the point of closest approach, it fired up its engine to slow itself down even more. This slowed it down just enough to enter into an elliptical orbit with an apoapsis of 70,000 kilometers, the exact height it was aiming for before. Since the gravity assist did most of the work, Orion was able to save a huge amount of fuel. However, Orion still hadn't reached its distant retrograde orbit, so it had to do one more burn in order to circularize its orbit. It performed a burn once it reached its apoapsis to accelerate and raise its periapsis to 70,000 kilometers. This got Orion into a distant retrograde orbit, which meant it traveled much deeper into space than the Apollo missions. A single orbit of the moon at this distance took 12 days, and if NASA wanted to, they had the option of extending it by another 12 days by simply staying around the moon for another lap. This orbit was ideal for NASA, as it meant they could spend more time testing out Orion's systems. This trajectory may seem unusual at first, but when we look at it from the moon's perspective, it starts to make a lot more sense, and we can see how the moon captured Orion. It's even more interesting if we go back to Earth's perspective and take away the moon. Technically, Orion was actually still just in an elliptical orbit around Earth, but because its orbital period was the same as the moon, it appeared to constantly swap sides. To get back to Earth, Orion had to break free of the moon's gravity. This meant doing the clever gravity assist maneuver, but in reverse. It slowed down so that it would come close to the lunar surface, and then did a final burn, which sent it on a trajectory back to Earth. The reason it waited to perform this final burn at its closest approach is due to the Oberth effect. Even with the same amount of fuel on board, the rocket gains much more velocity by burning closer to the moon when it's feeling the most amount of gravitational pull. Imagine two moving walkways, one moving slowly and one moving fast. If someone walks down the slow one, they will come off the end still moving quite slowly. If someone walks on the fast one, they will come to the end at a significantly higher speed. Not only that, they will achieve a higher delta V by using less energy, since they have spent less time walking. When a spacecraft is at its closest approach, it's experiencing the highest amount of gravitational pull, which speeds it up, as if it were on the faster walkway. These types of maneuvers are an incredibly important part of spaceflight. They allow humans to make the most incredible leap to the moon. And with Orion, they will continue to pave the way for future astronauts. And now it's time to give away a Saturn V rocket. The winner of this Primal Space giveaway is Ben Benson. Congratulations. But don't worry if you didn't win, we'll be announcing yet another giveaway in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.